Well, welcome to NVTV. Now, it's normally Julian here doing this, but we didn't tell him. <laughs> so, welcome to the Jerry Kelly Show, the one and only Jerry Kelly. No, not the one and only, but the one that's on the television. You know what I mean? Here he comes. Movie House Cinemas. Proud sponsors of Tonight with Jerry Kelly. Treat yourself to a movie. Relax in VIP recliner seating without the VIP price tag. At Cityside, Glen Gormley, Makara and Coleraine. Enjoy the show. Welcome your host, Jerry Kelly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello. Welcome to the programme. Coming to you as usual with the help of the media students here at the Belfast Metropolitan College, working alongside some of my old production and studio colleagues at UTV. Now, as we all know, the World Cup is in full swing. But tonight we are not going to bother ourselves with all the shenanigans going on out there. But we are going to talk football. And we're going to talk about the historic and inspirational year of the Northern Ireland international women's team. Not only did they qualify for the Euros of 2022 and take their place alongside the cream of European football, but along the way they became role models for girls and young women all over Northern Ireland. My first guest, and please welcome the Northern Ireland team captain and a trailblazer for women's football here, Marissa Callaghan. <laughs> Hi, Marissa. Okay, it is great to see you. Good to see you. Marissa, you've been playing football since you were, what, 13 years of age? Well, my first football team was that age, but um, I started kicking the ball really, really young. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. So all your Long life time. it's been football, football, football. So this year must have been... A dream come true. Absolutely, and especially where I'm at in my, my career, it's kind of coming to an end, you know, age catches up with you. And um, I've played the game for 20 years um, with Clippenville ladies and yeah, getting the success that we got with Northern Ireland um, women was just unbelievable. What did it mean to yourself and then to the team? It meant everything. Um, if you look at us maybe three years ago, um, we as players actually approached the, the Irish FA and we asked for a little bit more support and the association, um, hands down, have been unbelievable since then. And what happened previous to that, we had um, one manager who looked after all the senior team, all the youth sections. Um, he had a lot of players to look after, so it was quite hard for him yeah, to, yeah. to focus on the seniors. And um, yeah, we got a new manager that just focused on us. and. And from then, it just completely um, changed the game. You, you nearly missed the year. You, were, you had an injury, hadn't you? I did, yeah. You yeah. would have been devastated had you not been able to go. Yeah, it was great. It was probably what, the worst seven weeks um, of my entire life. Um, I broke my foot. We tried to, to kind of play it down because we obviously didn't know if we were going to make it or not. We, we said it was a, a, a toe injury. Yeah, I didn't realise you actually broke your foot. Yeah, I broke wow. my foot, yeah. Um, it was actually a stress fracture. Um, so it was something that was, it was, it happened seven weeks before the Euros anyway. And basically the, the our doctor had said, once I got the x-rays and stuff, the doctor had said, normally we would go in for operation and it would take 12 weeks recovery, but we didn't have 12 weeks. So he says, we'll just throw everything at it and, and hope for the best. So I went into a cast for um, almost four weeks. And I remember getting another x-ray three weeks after I'd done it. And the, the doctor was like, there, there's no change. Um, so I just went with it. I took, I went to our nutritionist and, and asked her what, what can I take to help. So I, I took loads of vitamins and I don't know how it happened, but I went. I, I got, got there. I got, got there. there. Yeah. It was a tough learning curve there now because you, you had Austria and you had Norway, and then you had to play the lionesses, the English lionesses, who went on to win the tournament. It was a steep learning curve, wasn't it, for you all? Yeah, it was difficult. Um, I mean, if you put it in context, we, we probably didn't have any right to be at the Euros. Um, Normally what happens is it's the top 16 countries in Europe that qualify 
Um, so it was a tough 15 then us. Um, and in Europe, we, we at the time, um, were like 31st. So if you, if you look at our group, we had, so in our, our qualifying campaign, Norway was the top seeds, and then you had Wales, Belarus, us. And so we were supposed to finish off fourth in the group. Yes. And what we done, we finished second. Yes. And we managed to, to get the playoff against Ukraine, and we played home and away and, and beat them both times. And, and that was our journey to, to the Euros. And um, we actually got, we had previously played Norway in the, the, the qualification stage, but we had also played England in the World Cup qualifications. Um, so there were teams that we were, we, pr we played regularly the last couple of years, um, but they were just too strong for yeah. us. Um, we're a team that's made up of, of amateur players. Yeah, yeah. How many other, how many full-time players are on the on your There's squad? There's very little. Obviously, it, it depends on on who who's not injured and stuff. Because at the minute we do have a few injuries that that stop them from coming. But we played um, Italy there um, last yes, week and one and one. We beat them one 0 mm -hmm. Fourteenth in the world they are, and us being forty ninth, so it was a massive um, victory for us. But um, yeah, the last match we had around seventeen amateur players. So. That meant around six full time. So they all full have full time jobs and they're playing international football at the same time. Yeah. What about your own story? You went off to America on a scholarship, on a football scholarship. I did. So back then, there wasn't too many um, teams, there wasn't too many players, there wasn't too many, like there was no professional league or anything, yes. not even in England. Um, so what everyone done was if you got an opportunity to go to the States, then you took it. And, and lucky enough, I was given that opportunity and went over to Alabama when I was, when I was 18. And then when you come back, you studied again at the University when I, of When I came back, yeah. So I, I stayed in America for two years. I was, I was very homesick, so I didn't stay for the four. Um, so I came home and went to Jordanstown and studied um, part-time. Now, what were you studying? Did, did you, were you studying to become a coach or studying to become a better player? Well, when I was over in America, I was, um, I was studying uh, kinesiology. So it was just a study of movement. It was something that I, th I thought I was interested in. It's more like a kind of physio type yes, role and yeah. then I thought I wanted to be a teacher and I thought I wanted to be a coach so anyway it ended up um, my big passion was coaching so whenever I came home um, I done the sports coaching degree at Jordanstown part-time work full-time played part-time and yeah just how did you juggle all those things at, at the one just, time it's it I think it's um, it's just easy when you, you love something I think we're all the same you know we keep ourselves busy and um, lucky enough I, I have a passion for the game so when you were um, either coaching or playing, it was it, it kind of, I suppose, took your mind off everything yeah, when you were yeah. out doing it. A few years ago, as you were saying, you would have been hard pushed to get a couple of hundred people at a, at a women's game. Oh, yes. Now, I mean, now what? You filled Windsor Park? Yeah, I mean, three years ago when we weren't that successful, we, our mindset was we used to go out and, and kind of try to keep the scoreline down. Um, and we, we played a very defensive game. And whenever Kenny Shields came in and took over as our manager, um, he completely transformed our mindset and every game we went out to, to win. So it was far, very different for, for all the players and, you know, the players never ever changed. It was, it was just the management team yeah. that changed and, it, it, you know, because we had so many successes, then people started to listen and, and started to come and watch. And um, last year we played at Luxembourg at, at the National Stadium, Windsor Park, and, and sold it out. Brilliant. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. What about money? Your, your male counterparts are earning astronomical amounts of money. Like, can you make a living being a professional footballer in, in, in Northern Ireland? Well, you can't in Northern Ireland because no. there's no such thing. Um, I mean, they are trying to to move the game on and, and hopefully in the next kind of five and ten years we'll start to see um, the women's game kind of improve a I lot mean, more. You've, you've just told me you've, you've, you packed out Winter Bar. Yeah, I know. I so, know. so why can't you get paid a lot? Yeah, I think we need to, to look at our league. At the minute, um, the women's league's in the summer and we play every Wednesday night. And it's tough to get people through the gates because, you know, most of our, our fans are, are young young people, you know, young families, young girls and boys. And we play at 8pm on a Wednesday night, so it's quite difficult yeah, yeah, to get, yeah. you know, our, yeah. our fan base yeah. through the gates. So... I think we have to look at our league structure and, and, and hopefully one day we'll, we'll go at the weekend and we'll start getting people through. Have you seen physical evidence that young girls and, and young women are taking up football? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I work for the, for the Irish FA as girls participation officer and my main role is, is to, to get more girls playing at the grassroots level. And we have programmes like the, the Disney programme, Shooting Stars, and, you know, we have girls knocking at the door trying to get into those programmes. So it's just unbelievable that the... the 
I mean, all, there's so many local clubs that's, that started and there's just so many girls wanting to come and play and, and get involved in the sport. Well, you've been a great ambassador for the game. So not only to get to the Euros, Cliftonville ladies won the, the league as well this year. Yeah, it's been a brilliant year, I have to say. Um, first time in 20 years we, we, we won the league. Um, we got, again, new management team come in two years ago and a little bit more support for, for the, the female side of the club. And we done real good recruitment and, yeah, we, we lifted the cup this year. Marissa, it's a joy talking to you. Thank you so much. What a year you've had. Ladies and gentlemen, Marissa Callahan. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Our first uh, music tonight comes from an exceptional young talent from Mayo Bridge in County Down. Earlier this year, she won the BBC School Soloist of the Year competition, but that's the only start of her achievements. She has appeared in Brit's Got Talent, and she's been cast to play the lead in a new musical coming out next year called Marine and the Kaleidoscope. And that's not, if that's not enough, she has just been chosen to represent Ireland in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest next year. And she's only 13 years old. Would you please give a welcome to the fabulous talent that is Sophie Lennon. <laughs> Are you sure you're only 13 years of age? Yeah. <laughs> having done all that, having yeah. done. Let's talk, let's talk about Britain's Got Talent. Okay. Um, so I um, got asked, I auditioned for Britain's Got Talent back in January. And where, where did you have to go to audition? Um, I did an online audition and then I had to go over to London and I got through and then, yeah, I just went over there. No, no, hold on a minute. You went over there. Where did you go to London? Somewhere into a big theatre? Uh, yeah, I went to... I. Th I don't know what the theatre was called, okay. but I just went over to London, I auditioned in front of the producers, and then I got a phone call back that I got on the show. You got, so you got on the big show? Yep. You <laughs> met Ant and Dak? Yep, and what? Ant and Dak were so, so lovely. And um, Dak and Donnelly, he actually gave me a can of water instead of a glass of water, and I just thought that was kind of weird, but I still, I still drank it. Do you still have the can? No. Oh. <laughs> Mommy threw it out. So you were... <laughs> So you went on stage in front of the who were the judges then? Um, well, um, Simon Kyle, Alicia Dixon, um, oh, um, Amanda Holden, and David Williams. And David Williams. And what did you sing that night? For? Um, I sang for good from Wicked. And I'm told I didn't see it now, unfortunately, <laughs> but I'm told you got a standing ovation. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get through. You didn't manage to get through. Uh, well, I was a stand-in for Lauren Alwood in the semi-finals, but she didn't like back out or anything, so. Ah, OK, OK. OK, so that was a great experience. <laughs> Tell me about the musical now, this musical that you're in, this oh, yeah. Marine and the Kaleidoscope. And so, yeah, it's Marnie and the Kaleidoscope. And so, yeah, I auditioned for that um, back in the summer there. And, well, um, whenever I, I auditioned for it, um, two hours later, I got a phone call saying, like, I've been cast. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that was quick. <laughs> and, yeah, and then I've been back and forth, like, for rehearsals and cast recordings and all. And it's just... Nice. Are you sure you're only 13 years of age? <laughs> yes. What about school? Um, well, I do miss a couple of days, but I mean, that, that's fine by me. <laughs> that's fine by you? Yeah. And when's this musical going to open? Um, hopefully next year. Fabulous. Also, the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. Tell me about that. <laughs> so I have to go over to Armenia, uh, not this Sunday, but this Sunday. It's after. in Armenia next Armenia, year. Armenia, right? Yerevan in What's Armenia. What's the capital of Armenia? Yerevan, I think, is it? Does, has anybody got a clue? I don't know. That's just where I'm going. I think you're right. Yerevan. I think. Uh, you're, no, you're right. Yerevan. Because oh. <laughs> I looked it up last night. <laughs> so you're going there, yes? Yeah. And so I'm going over there next Sunday and we're just doing all the rehearsals. I've had my final dress fittings and I'm just so excited. <laughs> I bet you are. I bet you are. And this Christmas down in Yuri, you actually were there at the opening of the or the lighting up of the Christmas tree? Yeah, um, I was there and I was singing in front of a couple of thousand and yeah, it was just really good Do buzz. Do you get nervous? Well, sometimes if it was like really, really big, I'd get like really nervous. But then once, uh, once I'm on the stage, I'm like, well, this is kind of like home because I've done it so many times and I was just like, it's a breeze. <laughs> Have you had your voice trained? Do you go to singing um, lessons? Well, I do go to singing lessons. I go to um, Fiona Flynn and Yuri, right. and I have to say she's amazing. She's amazing? Yeah. Well, you, she's certainly got an amazing voice. Now, you're not going to sing. Have you got the Eurovision song? you know the Eurovision song yes. that you're singing? We're not going to sing that tonight. 
<laughs> no, we're going to because we're going to leave that. Going to surprise you. We're going to leave that a surprise for next year when you go to what's the capital of Armenia? Uh, Yerevan. Yerevan. <laughs> You're right. So we'll, we'll leave that as a surprise then. What will you sing for us tonight? Um, I'm going to be singing "Wind Beneath My Wings" by Bette Mid Midler. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Will you make your way across there? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, what? Where do you hear this? Where do you hear it? Go ahead. <laughs> the wind beneath my wings. Remember, folks. She's only 13 years old. It must have been cold there in my shadow. sunlight on your face Are you are content to let me shine That's your way You always walk to step behind So I was the one with all the glory you are the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name For so long A beautiful smile to hide the pain Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I wish I could be I could fly higher than an eagle For you are the women beneath my wings to go unnoticed But I've got it all here in my heart I want you to know I know the truth Of course I know it I would be nothing without you
Did Natalia? Did Natalia? She's 13 years old. <laughs> it's been a joy, Sophie. Thank you so much indeed. Good luck in the Eurovision next oh, year. Thank you for having me. Put your hands together again. We're going to go to a break, but that's <laughs> Sophie Lennon. Back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Hello, my name is Cameron Davidson. I study level two FDQ at Belfast Met. I'm catering for the Jerry Kelly show and I want to run my own restaurant and be a head chef. Ready for an epic family day out? Then head over to the Jet Centre. Explore the excitement of Alley Cat Soft Play. Slide into action with hours of fun. While also getting time for a coffee break. Arcade more your thing? Say no more. Play games and win tickets. Feeling competitive? There's a game for everyone. Become gem mining experts at the Jet Centre. See what gems, stones, arrowheads or fossils you'll discover. Golf more your thing? Practice your game on the North Coast with mini golf. Lots of fun to be had on this 18 hole outdoor mini golf course. Or join us for bowling or a movie. The Jet Centre. Entertainment for everyone. Visit Antrim Town Centre and the award winning Antrim Castle Gardens and make magical memories like never before. Embrace the giant Christmas spirit and experience the enchanted winter garden. Book your tickets at enchantedwintergarden.com. Brought to you by Antrim and Newton Abbey Borough Council. of shows to enjoy at the Grand Opera House in 2023. From West End and Broadway musicals to thrilling drama and many more sensational productions. Book your tickets at goh.co.uk. Nestled in the Castlereagh Hills, you'll find Hillmount Garden Centre. Whether you're looking for winter plants to brighten your garden, a real Christmas tree or new Christmas decorations, you'll find it at Hillmount. There's gifts for all the family and gift vouchers for that one friend who's so difficult to buy for. There's everything from barbecues to pizza ovens and garden furniture. And you can shop these online too at hillmount.co.uk. After all the shopping, stop in at the Gardener's Rest and relax with a warming cuppa or enjoy a festive feast. Hillmount Garden Centre, Upper Braniel Road, Belfast. <laughs> Now, my next guest is one of the best-loved actors in the country today. From her childhood days when she first joined the Lauren Drama Circle, she has been part of a myriad of iconic roles in film, stage and television. She is steeped in the theatre tradition and will be forever associated with the late, great James Young back in the 60s, right through to the present day where she plays the irrepressible Ma in Give My Head Peace. I can only talk about one person. Would you please give a big, big welcome to the wonderful Olivia Nash. <laughs> Hello, my dear. Hello, my darling. <laughs> It's great to see you, I have to say. Great oh, to see it really you. is. It's lovely to see you, Jerry. It's great. I'm true and I'm saying that you've spent most of your life, either on, your professional life, either on stage, mm -hmm. behind a, a, a microphone or in front of a camera. Yes. That has been your life. I've been very, very lucky. Wow. I really, really have. 
I mean, I, I did have a, a day job, <laughs> as you talk about as well, because in, seriously, in the days whenever I joined James Young, um, you had to live uh, within a, a five mile radius of the theatre. Of the Grip Theatre? Oh, yes. <clears throat> and your wages were three pound a week. <laughs> With James Young. That's a God's truth. And uh, so, but everybody in those days, you know, in the profession, I mean, unless they were of means, uh, everybody worked, you know what I mean? But it was great, you know, you just... Oh, what, what did you work at? You did, I was with Health and Social Services. I worked in the... Uh, I started off in the courthouse on the Crumlin Road because the uh, upstairs of it was the um, Antrim County Council yes. headquarters. Um, it was great because we used to see all the cases, you know, downstairs, and it was it was terrific. And in those days, um, uh, I'm sure there isn't anybody here that remembers, but there was a, a, a detective called Perry Mason. Oh. And uh, Perry Mason had a, a, a secretary, uh, Della Street. So every time we walked through, and all these was, maybe going in to go into jail, <coughs> you know? But all the time, hey, Della! <laughs> <laughs> get, and you know we were quaking for them, but no, it was, it was very happy. So when you were doing James Young, you were actually working yeah. during the day. And how yeah. many shows were you doing with James Young? Uh, we did six shows, uh, five, seven shows a week. My goodness gracious uh, me! And they used to come out of the courthouse, go like the hammers down uh, to uh, York Street, and then get a bus. Maybe if you were lucky, up round to you know, to the group. But it was your life. I loved it. Yeah. I, it all started with the Lauren Drama Circle. It did. It did. Are they uh, still in existence, by the they way? They are. They are. Indeed. Are you still As a member? A, no. Well, uh, I, oh, yes, I'm a member, but not an active. No, no, Not an no. active member. Oh, yeah, I'll always be a member. Because it was actually through Lauren uh, Drama Circle that I uh, became professional because we were doing the festivals and all those days, which were great, great fun. And I uh, <coughs> had one... Um, I was doing The Loves of Cass McGuire, which is a beautiful play by Brian Freel, and uh, I got Best Actress. Oh. And uh, the next week, I got a letter from Jimmy Young <coughs> and one from Hibby Wilmot in the arts uh, inviting me to come for an uh, audition. And I went with Jimmy, and I was with Jimmy for over nine years until internment came in. <laughs> In the early 70s, 70, 71. Literally, 71. yes. Well, yes. Let's talk a wee bit about Jimmy Young. There would be a, at least one generation, if not two, and maybe three generations, who do not know who Jimmy Young no. was, how funny, how innovative, how clever he was. Tell us a bit about Jimmy. Was he the genius of his day? Yes. Yes, he really, really was. Because um, <coughs> when uh, earlier on, I had got... Uh, uh, I could have gone to RADA, and uh, my parents... Oh, my wee girl in London. To tell you the truth, I was scared to go anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, But anyway, the next thing, this came up with Jimmy. And I have no qualms in saying that I learned <clears throat> more with Jimmy than I would have learned. And his sense of timing was immaculate. And as well as that, you could be quite frightened because do you, <laughs> do you see if you jumped a line with Jimmy? You were in bother. Oh, he was a tough you know? taskmaster, was oh, he? Oh, yeah. But... Amazing man, you know, amazing man. And is that where you learned your excellent timing? Well, all thank you. Yes. Your comedic, yes. All approach to all things. All that, yeah. Because oh. I love doing. I know prior to that, I mean, I did all sorts, you know. But I always like comedy. But with Jimmy, well, timing is everything, isn't yes, of it? Course. Really, in, yes, yes. in comedy and. Uh, I, I just loved it. You mentioned there that the Troubles came a couple of times in 71 and then yes. Jimmy sort of went off the boil. People weren't going. He did. And, and what uh, happened to you then during well, the 70s? Well, <laughs> I had to work. Uh, because um, uh, we, what we did was <clears throat> every year we would have had the month of uh, uh, June and part of July off. Mm. And... Uh, uh, my late husband and I, we were always going to get married each year. And then we would say, oh, no, we'll wait till next year. And uh, so anyway, I got married uh, in June of 1971. And we got ourselves, <coughs> they were called flats in those days, now they're apartments. But we had a lovely wee flat. And it was beautiful and all done up and everything. And we were to go back in again. We were to open... Uh, Oh, I'm not sure what date in August we were to open, and internment came in, and everything went dark. 
as you know, the, all the theatres, the cinemas, yes. there was no entertainment yeah. of any description. And there we were at the bottom of Fort William Park, sitting like two prunes. <laughs> and, no, <laughs> and no money coming in. And no money coming in. But I, I was still, now you'll say, I was still working, uh, you know, in... Uh, right, so uh, you, look at the years you've gone through. You, let's let's <laughs> jump forward. And how did you get the job in, uh, with Asma and with well, the Home the Wall guys? That was funny because um, uh, the boys were all very young <coughs> at that time. <coughs> Beg your pardon. They weren't long out of university. Yes. And uh, they had had like, almost like a footlight type thing you know, going on in, in university. So uh, I don't know if any of you remember, but there was this show called The Show, which was quite infamous, really. Oh! Do you remember it? Because we were doing Kelly at the same time and the you BBC were. started doing the show. You were. That's right. And it was in the old um, studio up at Balmoral. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <coughs> first night of it, I, I did all with Bertie Sweeney. Bertie, the, the late Bertie, Bertie Sweeney. Sweeney. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another wonderful man. Yeah. And Bertie Sweeney and I did, uh, we, we, t we were Claudette and forget what his name was but anyway we did these wee things and uh, so we just stayed together ourselves we were all right we didn't bother with our masses and uh, <laughs> that night after the first night uh oh all pardon me but all hell had let loose uh and by things that had been said and done you know during the show so i went into the house all you know oh you know great and my mummy said to me well that's it you're not coming back there <laughs> Yes, because there was a whole row there over was a, whole a, a skit about Ian Paisley, yeah, if I yeah, recall. All that. Oh, but I anyway, that well. I, d I did go back, and the boys, what I'm coming around, at one, uh, two or three writers, <coughs> and then uh, the, towards the end of it, uh, the boys uh, wrote for uh, the two of us, and that was me, my introduction to them. And then after that, they, <coughs> they were doing... Um, a perforated Ulster. Yes, remember that. Remember that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they still do it sometimes, but the the character Ma and that was like a little scene within, you know, perforated Ulster. And I was invited along to play Ma. <coughs> and and uh, that was twenty. On. That was twenty five years ago. And you're still playing. And you've just finished recording. Just finished recording. And we're going to. You're going to go into the opera house again. Yes, we are. We start. We go on a tour in. Um, the end of February and all of March. Have you still got the enthusiasm for it, oh, the yeah. passion for it? Still love it, love it. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm a lot older now, obviously, uh, and um, I must admit, I I I started worrying. You know the way. Well, I didn't lose confidence, but I I started thinking, oh my God, I'm far too old for this. Carry on, you know. And I thought, you know, are the boys just being nice to me? <laughs> 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 you know, keep me on. <laughs> No. You know, it was frightened of losing the family allowance. Well, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, I, I, we have a great rapport, uh, you with, know, with and uh, uh, so... Ma will be around for quite a few years. Oh, I want you. to go back to the Jimmy Come Young on. thing because there's someone else I want you to meet. Will you stay on for the Oh, moment? yes, I'd be delighted. I, I want to continue, but in the meantime, will you please thank Olivia Nice for me? <laughs> because if... If, if you are of an age, and we, were, we mentioned this, that you really never saw or heard James Young perform, then through his show, Our Jimmy, my next guest has developed the uncanny ability to recreate and replicate some of the characters James Young invented. Starting with the local street gossip, Derek, would you please welcome William Caulfield. Thank you, thank you, Ah, because you're looking lovely, it's not often you see friendly faces about Belfast in the present time, no sure it's not, and it's nice to come walking out and see normal people. I was doing a show the other night and I came walking out with you here, there was a woman in the front row, and I came walking out and she was wearing a low cut blouse, I didn't know where to look, I did not know where to look, turned out it was two baldy men bending down. <laughs> 
And, uh, but I say queer changes from I was last in a TV studio, isn't there? Queer changes. I think what have we had about 25 Prime Ministers, we've had 10 Chancellor of the Exchequers, and not one, not one First or Deputy First Minister the whole time. <laughs> like my mommy says, my mommy says, son, she says, not a bit of wonder they're called MLAs. She says, that stands for muckers and layabouts. <laughs> And uh, my mummy's writing before I forget now, my mummy says hello, you'd love my mummy. Uh, my mummy, she's a girl up in the year, she's 87, do you know what I mean? But like, she's at herself. Now, my mummy fancies the bin man, but that means nothing. He's a wee white haired man, but just because the snow on the roof doesn't mean the fire in the boiler's out. <laughs> But people say to me, what is it like in the wee street? Like, it's queer changes, but the wee street hasn't changed. And it's funny, things change and some things stay the same. Like, our wee street now, take some of the neighbours, like, I wish you would take them, I really do. <laughs> There's uh, Owl O'Condrack, Lily O'Condrack, oh, she knows the old cat. Ooh, knows the old cat, I cannot stand her. And here, dear, uh, a fella, I don't know where she got it, like, but a fella touched her up for a thousand pound, and she lent him a thousand pounds, he was going to get a facelift. She hasn't a clue who he's looking for now to get the money back. <laughs> Slap it under. Slap it under. And then uh, Willie Simpson, he is... Uh, I've never seen Willie Simpson sober in my life. Never have I seen him sober. And here, dear, don't be saying I told you this now. He was going home the other night and his right leg went to the right side of a traffic ballard. And, uh, um, oh, he's right ahead of me now. And his left leg went to the left side of a traffic ballard. And he banged his... Ballards and um, <laughs> no, he went to the doctor and he wanted something to take away the pain but leave the swelling. <laughs> and oh, yes, and then Orange Lily, oh, don't start, do not talk to me about Orange Lily. She's a fanatic, I'm sure you just have seen her like in that 12th dancing about, like even her underwear is red, white, and blue. <laughs> and here's a really here, she has a wee dog, it's a, a wee orange bitch, but of course, so is she. But um, <laughs> no, listen, the wee dog got out. And a Catholic dog got at it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Catholic dog got at it. Here, the dog is at pups. As if there isn't enough pups about Belfast in the present time. And uh, she came over to us, she was in an awful way. She says, What am I going to do? I says, Don't be asking me, go away up to your own house. And she put an ad in the Telegraph Four Protestant pups for sale. She never said who the daddy was. Well, that night she had five inquiries from the IRA. But my wee street, I wouldn't leave it. Do you know why I wouldn't leave it? Because it's home. And it's true what they say. There's no place like home. See you later. <laughs>
modern storyline, but the characters gotcha. are, are still the same. What got you into James? You, did you actually see James Young perform? I met. I I, I shook hands with James Young once in my life. Uh, I, I'll do this as quickly as I can. I was brought up, uh, as you know, I told you this many times, in a very strict evangelical home, so there's no television allowed in our house. Because do you remember years ago the TV sat in the corner of the room? Mm -hmm. And the aerial was like two bits of wire that went up the top of it. Well, according to my daddy, that was the devil's box, that was his face and his horns, so there's going to be no TV in the house. This is true. My older brother had recorded a uh, James Young LP onto a big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder that we had. Yeah. So. When I was going home from school, all my friends were going in to watch Blue Peter and build uh, Thunderbird stuff. I was listening to this uh, voice, this comedian. And I was aware that at times he was as a male, other times he was female. I couldn't see him, but I knew b b by the sketches. <laughs> yeah. Then he had the ability, and this is the bit I really loved, he had them roaring and laughing, and then the next sketch was one of his poignant monologues, like the, the papish and the prod and others, oh, yeah. and had them reduced to tears. So there are recordings of me somewhere as a seven or eight year old doing uh, James, James Young. And then how it went on, I was uh, driving home from work uh, and I heard 3,000 people had been killed in the Troubles in Northern Ireland. And I thought, that's, that's awful. I knew, well, obviously there was 2,999 before that, but 3,000 struck me and I thought, if James Young was alive today, he would have written one of the poignant monologues. And I went home and lifted a piece of paper and I started to write as I heard it now, James Young didn't speak to me, that's not what I'm saying at all, but I heard the, 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 you know, the way his the rise and fall of his voice, voice. Yes. and I, I wrote this poem called 3000. To cut a long story, very, very short, it got broadcast on the George Jones show on BBC Radio Ulster. I, I, so I, I performed it as I had heard it, and when I finished, there was a pause for about probably two, no, let's, let's say th 10 seconds of silence. Now, 10 seconds of silence on the radio is a very long pause, and I thought I'd done something really wrong. And he says to me, did you write that yourself? I said, yes, I did. And he said, well, James Young would be proud of you. Uh, yeah. and, and I hadn't yeah. mentioned James Young. He said, James Young would be proud of you. He got it. He got, got it, it straight away. Well, talk about get it. Do young people get it? Does a modern audience get it, or the people who go you? Are they our generation? No, uh, there's quite a lot as our generation. But the thing that, that, that uh, I'm mean, <laughs> going to say, sir, it did surprise me at the start, uh, or more recently, is there's an awful lot of young people come because the beauty of the show is you don't need to know who James Young was. Right. What you're seeing on stage is an Ulster comic with Ulster characters doing sketches. And bringing it up to date. And so it's, so it's, so it's, so it's up to date. Uh, and the, the, the only, uh, I always, the, the last outing of it we had about, I think we had 16 sketches and there was only two pieces of that that were original, and they were two of the monologues. There you go. That, 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 that are I you did. bringing it on tour again? Are, we, are you going again I, with it? Uh, the Grand Opera House, what, at this stage, one night only next year, because I'm, I'm an international act now, Jerry. I'm all over well, the world, you as know, you know. Well, I mean, you said the man is all over the world because he does all the cruise ships yep. and is hugely successful on the cruise ships yeah, all around fortunate. the world. Yeah. What day is this? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I have no idea. Yeah, well... The well we, should be in, we should be in Panama or somewhere well, tonight. Well, at the end of the week, I'm flying to, to Barbados to join the Queen Mary to, to, do, to do a couple, a couple of shows. But the, 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 I'm in the uh, Grand Opera House doing our Jimmy. I've entitled the show The Best Bits, which means that uh, I won't have to learn it because I've already yeah, done no. it. The Best Bits, uh, I think it's the 28th of February. Uh, we we'll, we'll check it you out. Can ch you can check that out. But, but to, I, think, I, I, to I, think you started out doing a warm up for me. I know. I know. Look where you've got. Look I, where I am. I, it's, <laughs> isn't it, I love the fact that you have fallen and I have risen. Yeah, I you. love that. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. haven't lost your touch. I've watched Never. all the weeks that has already gone out. Yeah. And I'm saying, I'm not, and I'm not blowing smoke up his. I'm just telling him. <laughs> I think it's fabulous, and this you're should not very, be for eight weeks. Very this kind. should be for eight years. You're very kind. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> thank you so much. Great to you again. Olivia, thanks for you. Keep your hands together for two, two of my favourite people, Olivia and I. And William Coffey. So, you see that? Olivia won that last week. She was, this is your, what is it? It was, this is your... It was the business woman, the business woman of, of, the year. of the year. And this is your lifetime achievement. Lifetime oh, achievement. Fabulous. It's a lovely thing. <laughs>
Is it a headdress? Uh, no, uh, uh, my, uh, my... No, no idea. There, you have it back a little bit. There was children in the... Now, uh, no, please, if I'm, making, I'm only making fun of this, I'm not making fun of the award because I was delighted to receive it. Yeah. But I took it over to my daughter's and uh, his little twins, age five, staying with her at the minute, and immediately they put it on and they were going round like this here. <laughs> but, uh, well, they were well done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I was seriously delighted to receive it. And you see, you only get one of these when you're very, very old. Yeah. So <laughs> Have you done one, Jenny? Oh, <laughs> the only reason I mentioned that, well, one of the reasons I mentioned it was because uh, when she did pick up her Lifetime Achievement Award, it was at the Woman of the Year function last week. And part of the entertainment that night was a young singer from Belfast called Chris Devlin. And by all accounts, he went down a storm. And so we've asked him to come along tonight. So singing That's Life and making his television debut, would you please welcome Chris Devlin. That's life. That's what all the people say You're riding high in April Shot down in May But I know I'm gonna change that tune When I'm back on top Back on top in June I said that's life And it's funny as it may seem some people get their kids stomping on a dream But I don't let it, let it get me down Cause this final world, it keeps spinning around I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king I've been up and down and over and out and I know one thing Each time I find myself Laying flat on my face I just pick myself up And get the back in the race That's life That's life, I can't deny it Many times I thought of quitting, babe My heart just ain't gonna buy it and if I didn't think it was worth one single try I'd jump right on a big bird and then I'd fly I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king I've been up and down and over and out And I know one thing, each time I find myself Laying flat on my face I just pick myself up And get back in the race That's life That's life I can't deny it Many times I thought of quitting But my heart just ain't gonna buy it And if there's nothing shaking Calm is here to lie I'm going to roll myself up in a big ball and die. My, my. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, well done, well done. You started out as a trumpeter, though, not as a singer, apparently. I started out as a trumpeter, yeah. I only started singing during the lockdown. I was in and out of school of music when I was uh, very young. Right. And, uh, so you started singing during lockdown? Started singing during lockdown, where? yes. Just in the street. It was a fella... Oh, where, a else? where else would you start, <laughs> I suppose? <laughs> well, it was a fella a few doors up from us who came out with his wife. He's called Martin Hamill, and shout out to his wife, Frances, as well. They come out, and they entertained the street during lockdown. 
And uh, so I ended up doing it with them the next week. And wait, we wait, done wait, it. wait, wait a minute. They come out and entertain the street. <laughs> they come out wheeling their wheelie bins up and down the driveway. <laughs> and of course, I ended up going, going with them to do a bit of a sing song on a Thursday night for the NHS club. And then, yeah, we took it from there and I've been singing since. Oh, so when they were out applauding and you started to sing up and down the street? We started to sing up and down the street, yes. <laughs> and is that the first like time that. you realised you can sing as well as you can? Yeah, well, I never had the confidence to do it before, but uh, I suppose he pushed me into it. He gave me the audition and sure, uh, I'm here. Wow. <laughs> and is that the type of music you like, that Michael Bublé, Frank Sinatra type of thing? It is, yes. It is, yes. I uh, love Frank Sinatra would be, be my favourite. But uh, I love all the crooner music. All the crooner music of the... The 50s and the 60s and before then. What age are you? 26. Goodness gracious. <laughs> See if I had a jacket like that and I was 26. <laughs> <laughs> it, would be, it would be 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, thank you so much indeed. No Thanks bother. Thank you very luck, much. Good Thanks luck with the career. Me. Good luck with the career. Thank you okay, we're much. going to take a short break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you then. Bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carlos Liganauskas. I, am, I do level two FDQ professional cookery in the Belfast Met. I am doing catering for the Jerry Kelly show. My dreams is to open a restaurant myself. And Visit Antrim Town Centre and the award-winning Antrim Castle Gardens and make magical memories like never before. Embrace the giant Christmas spirit and experience the enchanted winter garden. Book your tickets at EnchantedWinterGarden.com Brought to you by Antrim and Newton Abbey Borough Council. Let the good times roll at Super Strikes at the Jet Centre. You can now book your lane online. We've got 14 bowling lanes and 4 mini bowling lanes. Plus, we serve delicious hot food and snacks. Discover bowling today at the Jet Center. Jet Center, entertainment for everyone. shows to enjoy at the Grand Opera House in 2023. From West End and Broadway musicals to thrilling drama and many more sensational productions. Book your tickets at goh.co.uk. Nestled in the Castlereagh Hills, you'll find Hillmount Garden Centre. Whether you're looking for winter plants to brighten your garden, a real Christmas tree or new Christmas decorations, you'll find it at Hillmount. Those gifts for all the family and gift vouchers for that one friend who's so difficult to buy for. There's everything from barbecues to pizza ovens and garden furniture. And you can shop these online too at hillmount.co.uk. After all the shopping, stop in at the Gardener's Rest and relax with a warming cuppa or enjoy a festive feast. Hillmount Garden Centre, Upper Braniel Road, Belfast. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Now, 
How many of you remember the heyday of Belfast department stores? Stores like Rob's, uh, Anderson and Macaulay, Robinson and Cleaver, especially at Christmas time when we virtually queued up to see their festive window displays. Well, those days have been recreated in a brand new romantic comedy that is being staged at the theatre at the mill from the 2nd of December until the 31st of December. It's called The Shop at the Top of the Town. And to find out more, would you please welcome the writer of the play, Michael Cameron, and one of the stars of the show, Sean Kearns. <laughs> Michael, good to see you again. Hi, Sean. Hi, good to see you. Uh, last time I was talking to you, Michael, your hair wasn't as long. No, that was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> uh, uh, last time I was talking to you, though, was after you'd written the Ruby, the beautiful story about Ruby Murray. Ruby Murray, yeah. yeah. So this time, you're looking back to another bygone era. You're, yeah. you're big into your nostalgia, aren't you? I do, like a bit of nostalgia. My dad had a great record collection and uh, there was always music in the house, so yeah. And is that what attracted you to Ruby Walsh in the first place for that show? Uh, yeah, um, it was basically a painting started that journey and then I got in touch with, um, with Ruby's family, some of whom are still alive, and they were very kind to share their stories. And then I met, I was, at that time I was just writing a blog and I'd lost my job through a bit of ill health and was just trying to keep sane. Yes. And I met a lovely gentleman called Sam McCready, one of the founder members of the Lyric, who yeah. said, that would make a great play. And he helped me turn it into a play. And and it, did, it did make a great play, absolutely. Thank you. Um, and I've been having the time of my life since. Uh -huh. That's great. What inspired this one now? I know we're talking about Robins and Cleavers and all the rest. How did this come into your mind even? I suppose... I, I thought about theatre at Christmas and I was being a bit selfish. I wanted to write a show that I wanted to see, so which was nostalgic, which was, you know, everybody has a memory. I bet you, you all in that audience have your Santa picture, you know, black and white taken yes. in the co-op. or yeah. Everybody yeah. has them. Yeah. And I have one, black and white, of course. Um, but I just felt Belfast audiences love to reminisce. They did it with Ruby. And I thought, this is a perfect time, you know, whenever things are tough, whenever things are hard, to just take a step back. Now, it's set in a rough year of Belfast history, 72. But the so that's story, the actual year of it? We've chosen that because we thought, one, it was a very tough year for Belfast stores um, because of all the security installations that were coming oh, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, it's, it's far enough back for people to remember. It's not so far like the 40s or 50s, you know, where... An, where you can still remember 70s culture, yes, yes. phrases, shops. Yes. So it's kind of drawn the audience in, oh, do you remember that shop? Do you remember? And then the characters are obviously fictitious, but based on the people who worked in the stores at the time. And we've created a nice kind of musical comedy drama. I'm getting this that. image of as a wonderful life in my mind for some reason or other. Well, Jimmy Stewart did a couple of Christmas films and everybody knows it's a wonderful life. Yes. But he did another one called Shop Around the Corner, which was very loosely set in a store in Budapest. And oh. it's a gorgeous Christmas film, but it's completely overshadowed by It's a Wonderful Life. Which is the greatest so, picture ever made, of course. Yeah, greatest fantastic. Picture. Sean, what attracted you to this? Now, you're a man who's done Shakespeare, a lot of Shakespeare, a lot, a lot of Shakespeare. You know, from Shakespeare to Panto. What attracted you to this one that Michael's written? It was a job, first and foremost, <laughs> over, over, over Christmas, and I've got a mortgage to pay. Um, no, I, I always think it's a real joy to work on a brand new piece, to be the first, uh, to be a, a member of a company that breathes life into words for the first time. And, and this story is, uh, it, it, it's a gorgeous story, and it's a, it's a story, it's, it's a, a rom-com. Uh, a rom-com, not only for, for young people, but for, I suppose, a, a, a more mature sort of love, okay. lo love as well. A mature rom-com. A, a mature rom-com, and about the lack of love and the finding of love. Um, and so the character that I play is a, is a character called Felix Hoffman. And you own the, you own the, the building? Yes, so Felix, Felix Hoffman uh, was Hungarian, and he fled the war as a young man, and he ended up in Belfast. And his father had a, a department store in, in Budapest. And so he he would have started off as a barrel boy, he would have started off selling stuff on the streets. This and, is all out of your mind now, isn't and it? He there's no, there's nothing up. factual about any of this. No. Right, sorry, sorry. So sorry. then Felix opens 
his department store, Hoffman's, uh, and the, the, the tag of the shop is where nothing is impossible. Uh, so, yeah, and it's a, it's, a, it's a store which is very reminiscent of, of Robinson and Cleaver's. Uh, it's got a gorgeous staircase and, and it's, yeah, it, it, it's just gorgeous. It's just fun. It's gorgeous. But there's a, there's a romantic side to it. You know, it is a romantic. Yeah. So romance is in it. Oh, yeah. definitely. A bit of scandal as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Slight. Slight bits scandal. Of it. There's, a, there's a romance actually for all ages because one of the other things we wanted to say at Christmas was that, you know, love at Christmas wasn't just for young people. It was for people of any age. And not just for um, Christmas. But yes, and it's like a puppet. It's not just for Christmas, <laughs> yes. Um, so there's different strands of the story. So some of the younger shop workers have a bit of an eye for each other, but they kind of don't really get on that well. Okay. And lo and behold, Mr. Hoffman has a wife who's um, a little bit flighty around some of the younger males. Really? And, oh, it's, it's shocking. Are you shocking. aware of this, Mr. Hoffman? I could be. You know, uh, yeah. yes, yes, he is slightly. Well, he he becomes he becomes aware of it. Uh, and he and yeah and and he makes a, a a decision on what he thinks is fact and it it turns out that it's not fact and it's a decision that he regrets. Is the show Christmassy? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it it's is. full of warmth and it's full yeah. of charm and it's and it's a musical as well. So and Garth McConaughey has written some beautiful original songs for this and and again it's always a joy to to perform new new music. Well, we want to hear one of the songs from it. Will you set this one up that Rosie's going to sing for us? What's, what's the lead up to this particular song? Uh, so the basis of this story is that uh, R Rosie has been writing to a pen pal and they've decided to meet for the first time. But due to some sort of mix up, her intended date doesn't actually show up. So she's left in the restaurant at Christmas on her own. And uh, that's the story behind the song. I know how she feels. Me too. Let's have a listen. Will you please welcome Rosie Barry. I have given up all chances of slow romantic dances underneath the twinkling lights and mistletoe. I can see it all so clearly the girl they call Miss Nearly the one who spends her Christmases alone it's never me it's never me I'm the last one to be chosen I will stand until I'm frozen in the snow as they walk on by it's never me it's never me i just want someone to hold me to love and kiss me boldly not comparing me to someone else they know Maybe this will be the season I will finally find a reason To believe that love could actually be mine I can only go on saying I am me, I'm not betraying The girl I am and always hope to be It's never me I'm the last one to be chosen I will stand until I'm frozen in the snow As they walk on by It's never me It's never me I just want someone to hold me To love and kiss me boldly
to be chosen I will stand until I'm frozen in the snow As they walk on by It's never me It's never me I just want someone to hold me To love and kiss me boldly Not comparing me someone else they know it's never me Come on and join us. Rosie, dear, it's never you. It's never me. Never ever you, dear. No, not at all. That was fabulous. All Thank the music's you. brand new, yes? All yes. brand new music, all written specially for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do I recognise you? You might. We have met before. We have met before. Yes. You and two other girls. Yes. The indeed. Swing Time Starlets. That's us. So you're still a member of the three uh -huh. girl group? Absolutely, oh why? So are you playing over Christmas with that too? We do, we have a show on the 5th of December in Accidental Theatre. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And you have that and this. Oh yes. How much are you enjoying this? Oh, too much. Too much? <laughs> too yeah, much. That's good, that's good. It's really good. good. Okay guys, you're on from the, Michael, you're on from the 2nd? 2nd of December. To right, the 31st. To the 31st. And I think we should point out it's not for sort of under 12. No, definitely not. It's not blue or anything like oh, that. No, but no, it's, no. It's, it's really lovely romantic comedy, but it's just for a more teenage upward family. A teenage audience, upward yeah. family. Well, look, yeah. can I wish you well? Hopefully I'll get along to see it. Please do. Thanks a million for coming in. Rosie, good seeing you. Sean, okay. thanks a million. Thank you very Michael, much. Thank you very Thanks much indeed. Us. Round of applause for our guest, please. <laughs> and that's the that sort of it for this week. Until, uh, until we see you again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.